Hey guys, just a quick uh, note. I know this is at the uh, beginning of the video and you haven't seen anything I've said yet, but I'm very enthusiastic about uh, Deluxe or Desert Fox Deluxe, but I have some challenges. And so I wanted to add this little piece of video here into my shrink grip so that you don't, you don't rush off and buy it and go, oh, I thought you said this was awesome because I don't know where my opinion on this is gonna end up but I'm significantly frustrated with uh, some of the rules layout, the rules wording, and bits and pieces as I'm digging into this. Now it is playable and it is understandable. It's just taken a lot more work than I thought and I'm having to print shit out from uh, Vassal and all the rest of it to get accurate uh, terrain effects charts and stuff like that. So uh, forewarned is forearmed. You've now been notified that I am not 100% certain this is going to be an awesome game or even a workable game, but we're hopeful. Cheers. Yes, it's just a shrink rip, so no one freak out, but uh, I wanted to do this because I have uh, a fairly high level of expectation for this game. And I've been, you know, uh, very curious about it, but read all of the uh, issues that had occurred with the magazine release but the magazine release sold out quickly and I was thinking oh man you know maybe it is good and then they came out with the deluxe edition I was like whoa I, I, I gotta get it so now that I have this enormous set of high expectations we're gonna have to work out how I'm going to calm myself down and not be disappointed with whatever transpires when I play it so let's have a look inside the box Right, well, let's have a look inside the box, eh? Or I guess before that, let's have a look at the back of the box. <laughs> so it's a Decision Games title, as I've already mentioned. Uh, handful of maps, not sure how big they are. We all know about the African campaign, obviously enough. We got a rules booklet, event display cards, six game maps. Oh boy. But just 560 counters. One game turn equals one month, but you break that up into multiple segments, so you're basically getting two week turns out of this. 10 mile hexes, brigade scale. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. All right, let's see what happens. I'm going to move to the side of the camera. And we'll have a look at the cards. Two dice. The rules, which I have uh, already downloaded and read. They're full color and well documented and well laid out. Pretty clear. Support document is one of the things that uh, kind of got me excited about it. Uh, about making the investment anyway I think I'm going to have to maybe put the air conditioner on but uh, let me take a sip of my tea so the support document spends quite a bit of time just going through uh, a lot of the changes in the game from the original Richard Berg uh, Desert Fox and then the other, the other expansion game Trail of the Fox or whatever that connected. So pretty pretty detailed. And then it shows all the breakdowns, all the orders of battle, the changes in the orders of battle, uh, all of that sort of good stuff. And keep in mind, this is a, I think a $68 game is what I paid for it. You can get it for 61 on other websites, but uh, this I uh, knew would ship sooner. Uh, let's see. This I have not read. This looks just like a, uh, the magazine articles that come out of Strategy and Tactics, which has been regurgitated 20 times. Now here, let's, uh, let's have a quick look here and see what we got. Okay, so the tech, uh, train effects, movement costs. These are kind of a cardboard stock style, but flexible. Refitting costs, upgrades, combat results table. I'm going to talk about combat and other stuff later. Uh, see, and a pretty detailed sequence of play, I can see that there. So, all right, 
Let's have a look at the counters. So I'm trying to look at this through the camera with you. They look like they're German. <laughs> All right. And probably there's your Italians there. These are actually a yellow color. I know they don't look it in uh, on the camera, but they're yellow. And these are gray. And these are a, sort of a, a reddish brown color. And then there's American forces down there, which can see all the Brits, all the Commonwealth forces and whatnot. Okay, so let's lay out. Uh, and these cards play an integral part uh, to the game. It allows you to make some choices about activities that are uh, involved in the game. So let's see what we got here. So we have our little Libya map. I'm just going to lay these out. Maybe I'll lay these out and come back to you. Right, well, let's have a look inside the box, eh? Well, I guess before that, let's have a look at the back of the box. <laughs> so it's a decision games title, as I've already mentioned. Uh, handful of maps, not sure how big they are. We all know about the African campaign, obviously enough. We got a rules booklet, event display cards, six game maps, oh boy but just 560 counters. One game turn equals one month, but you break that up into multiple segments, so you're basically getting two week turns out of this. 10 mile hexes, brigade scale. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. All right, let's see what happens. Well, I guess that spot to have you. I'm going to move to the side of the camera. And we'll have a look at the cards, two dice, the rules which I have uh, already downloaded and read. They're full color and well documented and well laid out. Pretty clear. Support document is one of the things that uh, kind of got me excited about it. Uh, about making the investment anyway. I think I'm going to have to maybe put the air conditioner on, but uh, let me take a sip of my tea. So the support document spends quite a bit of time just going through uh, a lot of the changes in the game from the original Richard Berg, uh, Desert Fox, and then the other the other expansion game, Trail of the Fox or whatever that connected. So pretty pretty detailed and then it shows all the breakdowns, all the orders of battle, the changes in the orders of battle, uh, all of that sort of good stuff. And keep in mind this is a, I think a $68 game is what I paid for it. You can get it for $61 on other websites, but uh, this I uh, knew would ship sooner. Uh, let's see. This I have not read. This looks just like uh, the magazine articles that come out of Strategy and Tactics, which has probably been regurgitated 20 times. Now here, let's, uh, let's have a quick look here and see what we got. Okay, so the tech, uh, train effects, movement costs. These are kind of a cardboard stock style, but flexible. Refitting costs, upgrades. Combat results table. We're going to talk about combat and other stuff later. See, uh, in a pretty detailed sequence of play, you can see that there. So, all right. Let's have a look at the counters. So I'm trying to look at this through the camera with you. They look like they're German. <laughs> all right. And probably, there's your Italians there. These are actually a yellow color. I know they don't look it in uh, on the camera, but they're yellow. And these are gray. 
and these are a sort of a, a reddish brown color and then there's American forces down there which can see all the Brits all the Commonwealth forces and whatnot okay so let's lay out uh, and these cards play an integral part uh, to the game it allows you to make some choices about activities that are uh, involved in the game so let's see what we got here so we have our little Lydia map I'm just going to lay these out maybe I'll lay these out and come back to you all right we've got the maps all set up now so let's uh, let's have a look and try and scroll around and check it out starting in the west and from Algeria through to Tunisia there and that little lump and then all the way down around through uh, Benghazi, Trabuk, Trab uh, Tabruk, I should say, and then west into Egypt. And that's, this is, uh, I think, a 10 foot table. I don't know, I, I, I forget. But uh, it basically takes up the same amount of space <coughs> lengthwise as DAC 2 but obviously not the volume of space because of the, the difference in the hex sizes, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, that gives you a bit of a feel for it. All right, I'm gonna change perspectives here and then we're gonna sit down and have a look at some of uh, the summary tools that go around this and we'll talk a little bit about the game system and, and have a bit of a chat about it and you know, get excited, get kind of like get our juices flowing to play this little sucker. All right, later. Okay, we're back and uh, Got a little bit of rain coming in. It's still hot, got the air, air conditioner on, so sorry about the noise. Uh, it's probably okay, I hope. Hot. Uh, let's have, I'm gonna switch the camera around. Let's have a look at some of the maps up uh, a little closer. Check out some of the detail. Get a little bit more familiar with the maps. One of the things I did go back and look at uh, was that DAC 2 is five miles to the hex. So, uh, that to me would mean that I had short sheeted my setup for DAC2 when I played it. I had it set up against the wall here uh, on, on, I think, on this table or, or maybe a set of uh, folding tables. I'm, I don't remember right now. And I think I took the Egypt, uh, the Alexandria Cairo map off and just used as a little chart you can use to just shuttle stuff backwards and forwards because unless the Germans do extremely well, nobody's getting to there anyway. And then of course, the, uh, the other, the, the, that, that game finishes at uh, Cyrenica, right? Uh, there's a, where is the port? I forget where it is. Uh, past, just past Benghazi, but yeah, uh, that's right. And I'll probably pronounce this wrong, but it's El Agalia, Agalia. Uh, that's what you get for saying it wrong. Uh, that, that's where the game ended. So, uh, so basically, let me switch. So basically, yeah, the DAC2 maps go from here to there, that's Alexandria, and then it goes down a little further, and there's Cairo, and it, their five maps are a long ways this way five miles per hex versus 10 miles per hex here. And what this game does is shrinks it up into 10 mile hexes and then takes you all the way through so that you can run the entire campaign, which would ostensibly be the uh, Trail of the Fox, Trail of the Fox and uh, the Desert Fox combined. And uh, I think there's something else that's involved in it as well. I didn't play, uh, Trail of the Fox. I had a look at the rules and there's different scaling and different combat system from the original. <clears throat> I enjoyed the original. I didn't think it was, you know, blow me away awesome by any means. I, I didn't play a whole lot of it. Uh, I played it once, I suppose, when I was a kid, uh, which I don't really recall that much of other than I remember having fun with it, I suppose. So 
I'm coming to this without a lot of uh, investment or heavy bias uh, in favor of or against you know, Desert Fox and all that sort of stuff. So, so here's one thing that's interesting. Let's just, I'll show you the map sizes are kind of quaint, right? They're going left to right. So there's one, two, there's, no, oh, okay. So there's one map that's 11 by 17, which is the Algeria map for the t uh, invasion of Tunisia and Algeria. Then uh, the Tunisia map is 17 by 22. Libya is eight and a half by 22. So it's a cute little, uh, cute little thing there. That's it, right? 22 inches long, eight and a half inches wide. Same again for this next section underneath here, which is Serpte. And then Cyrenica is 17 by 22. And the Western display, <coughs> the Western display, uh, Western map is, uh, Western desert is what I'm trying to say, is, uh, is obviously, 17 by 22 as well. Now, there's a map display that helps you organize where to put everything. And it's, it, it rolls in at uh, 11 by 32, <clears throat> just to keep things interesting. And so here's, here's how they suggest you set everything up. Uh, and of course, I turned it all around because I, I, I want, I'm like that, I guess, I want the coast that way, away from me, because that's one barrier, and then the other barrier is the the, the sea of sand uh, to the south, I guess. So the they have theirs facing uh, north to south, and I have my maps facing uh, north, yeah, north closest, and I have mine south to north closest. Now, one of the interesting thing is that there's uh, this shows you where you can put uh, all your Axis destroyed units here, uh, air units, the, your, there's a chart, uh, I guess you lay this out as well, basically. So there's gonna be Italy, Malta, uh, Operation Hercules, Fall Brown, Sicily, uh, shipping, and then the, the uh, on the other side for the Allies, there's allied naval units and destroyed units and things of that nature, which is probably all gonna be back the front to you. So let me surround it, dumbass. All right, so uh, allied units, uh, French North Africa. I'll open this up so you can see it the correct way around. And of course we'll have to flip it. So, <clears throat> so there's your Italy boxes and Sicily boxes. I'm just gonna pop this uh, out, you know, right in front of us, and we'll just work with it that way. Uh, even though that will mean some of the things will be upside down, I think that would be okay. It's mainly just the allied stuff. We'll keep track of that. Uh, so that that's that. And I thought it might be worthwhile having a look at some of the innovations slash changes that have occurred in the system. Uh, so let me grab my stuff here. If you look at the rules, it's uh, 41 pages. Really starts at page three with the components. So a bunch of abbreviations. The sequence of play starts on page five. So you're in the high 30s of, of page, page count for rules. As you can see, they're pretty well laid out as well. Uh, the event stuff is interesting because you're, you're, uh, it, it's part of the strategic impulse and there are consequences for choosing various events that will give you reinforcements or uh, impact uh, Malta and Crete and other things of that nature. So that, that will add some replayability hopefully and also uh, a little bit of variability to what what could have happened, what did happen without it being one of those highly structured reinforcement. Uh, I know that the you know 15th Panzer is gonna arrive on X day. So that might aid replay uh, value there. Same thing goes with uh, withdrawals. There are cards that you can play for that as well. Uh, 
not necessarily interesting. The zones of control in this game are going to depend a lot on whether the unit's disrupted or not, if it's in reserve, if it's in general, supp uh, general supply, and then the type of uh, parentheses it has around the combat factor. But uh, whether or not you're mechanized as well is also going to, uh, and mobile is going to be important uh, to uh, an important consideration. Now there's a nifty little rule here called night movement. That, uh, it, it's presuming that units will only move at night. I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit here for you. I guess it's just easier for me to move the, move the, the document. And it allows you to move through a Zoc. Uh, it does cost you double movement points and all that sort of fun stuff, but I thought that was a nice little touch uh, uh, for, for the game. Supply. <clears throat> now, haven't played yet, but having read the rules, three, three, uh, three levels of activity going on here. Dumps are used to activate bases, but also to facilitate, com facilitate combat uh, and do some construction and stuff like that. And you use those to build bases, and then bases are where you can then bring additional supplies in uh, that I believe can be dr uh, dumped or dropped off. Excuse me. And uh, they can also uh, allow you to... Uh, uh, keep guys in general supply so that come the point where they want to uh, go into combat you can consume them uh, not the token heavy uh, OCS style of supply but more of a general supply with <coughs> supply uh, uh, MSUs and things of that nature being given to you to use to sort of propagate bases and then stay within certain distance and all the rest of it. <clears throat> my voice is uh, really not doing well. I think it's these steroids I'm taking from my back. Uh, a wide variety of movement capabilities. So you obviously do overruns, but there's a road march, which is gonna give you uh, significant benefits as a truck-based unit. You're gonna move faster than tanks. Uh, and then foot, foot units obviously will move a little faster, but not that much faster. And then there's a forced march capability that's going to probably, you know, generally speaking, is going to put you in disrupted uh, mode. And then there's a whole reaction sequence that's available to you to react to the enemy. Uh, it has long-range desert rats in it as well, so you can do uh, raids and things of that nature. Combat, I thought, was pretty interesting because there's basically there's standard combat and there's overruns. But then there's uh, more specific types of combat that, uh, let me see if I can find them. Uh, there, here we go, yep, these deliberate battles and uh, uh, mobile battles and exploit battles here that will uh, allow you to uh, make, uh, make a more precise and uh, detailed attacks, I guess, and bring in, excuse me, bring in the value of uh, combined arms into into your gameplay, so it's going to be important that you have infantry and armor, infantry uh, armor and artillery, and you're going to need to manage those assets together to get the most out of your each individual combat that you run. Uh, so artillery units and anti-tank units will become important. Recon units are very important in the game. Uh, they're going to let me just reread this. I think I had some notes here for that because I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, if I can find it. Yeah, they're increasing the cost of the zone of control uh, to move into and out of the zones of control of the recon units. And I think they extend uh, more than one hex do they or am I just mixing that up with another game maybe mixing it up with another game so recon units are going to be particularly important to slowing you know for slowing down and uh, maybe identifying the uh, thrust of the the, the enemy's attack uh, as they press in against the the recon units you'll, you'll know that uh, 
they're serious about it if, if they're prepared to spend that much, uh, that many movement points trying to, trying to crank along. There are airdrops in this, there's, uh, there's uh, some special forces stuff, there's amphibious landings as well. I talked about the radar uh, missions. They can run along these tracks that are along the side of the game here, and this is where they save some space. Because basically here is all uh, wadi anyway, and so there are oases uh, spread around, and you can just move from one to the other in a turn, and uh, some of them are actually on map as well. But it allows you to get uh, get a, get the feel of the raiders without having to manually move them. You know, 34 hexes, 40 hexes, like you do with DAC. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out and compares to DAC. And I'm a huge fan of DAC, so it'll be a tough ask to uh, to if they can pull all this together and make it anywhere near as good as the DAC experience. I'll be very impressed. Uh, Air ops. I I have read these rules quickly, so. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot to comment on it uh, to compare it either to DAC2 or to the uh, original Desert Fox. Obviously, I think the original Desert Fox was literally just air points and you pop them in. Whereas here, we are going to have to go through an air superiority phase <coughs> and there will be damage accumulated in those uh, air superiority phases. You better do ground, obviously, ground support and, and interdiction just like normal. Uh, moving troops and supplies in and out and uh, there is a, a level of attrition and replacements for these guys uh, uh, naval strikes as well naval ops didn't dig in too deep on any of that but going to be important in the game uh, given that there are actually fleets here that are, that are represented right and uh, we've got to get that uh, coastal shipping going we've got to get the invasion of tunisia and Algeria organized as well. So uh, lots of good fun stuff. Off-map activities for Crete, Malta, and Sicily, of course. Uh, so, and here's a, a full description of all the different event cards. They're pretty, pretty detailed, as you can see, and there are many of them. So we'll have a good look at this and, and dig around in it. Probably start with a smaller scenario, unless I take a page out of Clay Stone's book. And just grab a couple of units and put them on the map and shuffle them around and see how combat might work and and whatnot but uh we'll probably start with fox killed and then uh i'll probably jump straight into the full campaign and, and have a whack at it right i uh, may as well <coughs> uh, if i set it up correctly i can set up uh just what i need and then add the maps as we go perhaps we'll see how that works out all right uh that's it long video but I think it'll be uh, well worth the uh, time investment. I'll give you another quick look at the counters if you wish. So I've got them a little closer to me and a little uh, easier to have access to. Pretty, pretty good uh, thickness, not awesome. Not, you know, I'm not going woohoo. Uh, certainly not as good as Compass's uh, counter thickness, uh, nor GMT's by any means. They are, you know, they're kind of, the flimsier magazine uh, quality is the word I'm looking for. And I think they're gonna punch out just fine based on how they feel. And obviously they're set uh, beautifully, so I, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Everything else is first class in production quality. Thick paper, full color, non-gloss. We can write on this, make notes. We've got the, the event cards oh, with a real elastic band, look at that. Uh, all these different event cards that we'll need to dig into and understand uh, and then some black and white charts here except for the terrain effects of course and then support booklets and some campaign articles pretty big package for 61 68 dollars depending on where you buy it uh, I'm uh, impressed so far 